No? Sorry to cut. No? Hi, do you hear me? Houston. Yeah, I know that. Uh, look, if there is no one connected, uh, you can just keep talking. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes or no? Okay. 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 Do you no? hear me? Yep. You hear me. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is on YouTube. Good. No <laughs> On YouTube, thank you. On YouTube. Okay, cool. Now let's see if this is right. On YouTube? Do you hear me on YouTube? Yes or no? Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Do you hear me? Now let's see if they see this. Oh, that's good. That's one more. Can I talk with the jury? The, see the yeah. Can I talk with the with, with the jury to see if yes, uh, you, you should just uh, be able to. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hi. Were you from the jury? Do you do you hear me? No. Do you do you hear me from the jury? Yes, it's okay for me. Okay. Okay for me too. Grazie. Okay for me. Okay. But for the jury, the, I have to, to keep my microphone, my microphone muted. Sorry? I don't know. For the jury, you have to keep it. Uh, you have to keep the it is now. They have to hear you. So it's good now. If they hear you now, it's good now. You, you hear me also now? Yes, they should. No. Yeah, yeah because you're muted. Yeah, but so I have to keep it. You have to keep it. Uh, no, you have to keep it unmuted. Okay. Yes, and you should put your presentation there, and sure. they, they should see it. And then we are up. Online. So now I. Uh... Oh, you're already sharing. It's only going to. Okay. Forward. Now you make it like that. If you want it also here, you can also put it here. Uh... Presenter mode. Go here. Okay. To the projector. And I can do it. Sure. Okay. Where is this? Where is the projector? Je pense que c'est prévu. Ok, donc nous sommes prêts à commencer. Nous sommes très heureux de vous être ici aujourd'hui. La plupart de nous sommes ici dans cette salle pour écouter votre défense de votre PhD, qui est le titre de la mitigation de l'atmosphérique turbulente des effets sur les optiques liées par les photoniques intégrées. Donc, Lucas, vous avez plus de 45 minutes pour présenter votre travail et puis le jury va vous demander des questions sur votre travail. Et nous allons répondre à toutes les questions. Il va nous demander to consider the possibility to deliver you uh, the diploma of uh, PhD. Okay, thank you. May I start? Yes. Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Luca Rinaldi, and I will present to you today my thesis work 
So the mitigation of atmospheric tur turbulence by photonic integrated circuits. So uh, let's start with the context. In order to increase uh, the usage in high-speed information, high data rates are required. On the other hand, we have atmospheric turbulence effects that we need to mitigate. So let's keep an example uh, of a satellite to ground downlink. And as you see in this image, uh, you see the amplitude and the phase of the, of the receiver beam that are distorted. So what is the, the idea? It is to use an adaptive optic system. So uh, I would like to show you my uh, laser. Is it? No, uh, I, okay. Sorry. Okay. So uh, this is the, the, the distorted incoming beam for, uh, waveform that is reflected from a deformable mirror and goes to a waveform sensor. So thanks to a feedback loop, we, we are able to correct the face of the beam and then to send it to a single move fiber. Well, this is the face after adaptive optics correction. As I told you before, the, the, the corrected beam is sent to a single move fiber. So we can write the single move fiber mode as M0, and we, we can also write the overlap integral as a, as a, as a product between the, distorted, the distorted incoming beam and the single move fiber mode. And we can also write the coupling efficiency as square modulus of this overlap integral. And the maximum of this value is about 80%. However, adaptive optics has some limitation. It requires, first of all, moving elements on the deformable mirror. We, all, we also have a complex measurement when dealing with strong turbulence conditions. So with scintillation, as, as, I, as I just said, is complex and is expensive. So what is the idea? The idea is the photonic integrated adaptive optics approach. In this case, the, the distorted beam, incoming beam, is reflected by a simple mirror and is sent to a demultiplexer device. Now, now the beam is decomposed into a set of modes and then is re recombined thanks to a photonic integrated circuit. And here we have the feedback loop as in an adaptive optic system. Well, this is, this is a not a new approach either. Dick Malik in 2005 uh, proposed a fiber array as the multiplexer device, a fiber phase modulators as photonic integrated circuits, so a, a beam recombiner, and the detailing uh, algorithm as a feedback loop control. Also, Noah, Noah Schwartz proposed in the Etionera uh, a photonic integrated circuits for tubular uh, sorry, mitigation, and the custom sub uh, derived a first realization of an active Max Zender interferometer for this approach but also Yang and Bio last, last year proposed a spatial, as a spatial multiplexer a multiplane light conversion that we will see later, a photonic integrated circuits as beam recombiner and a downhill hill steam, simplex algorithm and feedback loop control. Well, as you see, this is as this seems the same approach as an adaptive optics system. So as an adaptive optics one, we have the number of modes we can do the parallel with the number of actuators in a, de in a deformable mirror and the feedback loop control. So what is the goal of my thesis? Now, the goal of my thesis is the identification of the key and technological aspects under realistic condition. As I said before, uh, my approach can be applied to a different applications. As you see in this image, uh, in this picture, uh, inter-satellite networks, satellite to ground links, military networks, and so on. So the focus on my thesis is now the satellite to ground downlinks. Well, I would like to present you the scenario so we can consider a satellite and the receiver with a single move, always with our single move fi fiber. Now we have the, the LEO, so the low Earth orbit satellite to ground down, downlink and the propagation condition. So the, start, the, the scattering and so on. Well, we, we can also consider now the atmospheric turbulence effect and the gain brought by, the, by an adaptive optic system. We can also plot the uh, coupling efficiency into the single move fiber function of time. And we can also see the average adaptive optics correction and a value that we call threshold value or sensitivity value, so eta s. We are interested throughout, throughout my presentation to this both parameter, uh, the adaptive optics average correction and the, the instantaneous fluctuations. Well, at the end, uh, with no fading, we can consider a bit error rate Rate, so the error on the bit sent from, from the satellite that is higher than a value that we, calls, uh, we can call 
threshold value or sensitivity value. But this means also that we have a power that must be higher than a sensitivity power, so a threshold value of, of the power. So in slow fluctuation, fluctuation and fading, we can also consider that the probability of the of the instantaneous power is higher than our threshold va value. But also this means that the probability of our coupling efficiency is higher than a threshold value of coupling efficiency. So in order to study this point, I would like to show you now the study of the average coupling efficiency and the cumulative distribution function. So the probability to go over or down our value, threshold value. So, in the second part of my presentation, I would like to, uh, if you remember the, uh, my uh, photonic antigacy adaptive optics approach, I would like to talk to you about the, mode, the number of modes that I will call spatial analysis. So, in this case, I would like to talk about the coupling efficiency function of the number of modes that we are decomposing our incoming distorted beam. But also, uh, there are two different subparts, the average coupling efficiency and the fluctuation, as I told you before. But also, you can imagine this, the second approach, the, the second part will be always the temporal analysis, so on the feedback loop. Also, I would like to talk about a method in order to accelerate this feedback loop. And at the end, I would like to talk about the impact of, on the photonic integrated circuit technology of, this, my, of my, my two different approach. Well, let's start with the first part. So in this part, I would like to evaluate the, per the performance of different spatial division multiplexer device or the multiplexer device. So I would like to compare different multiplexer device and uh, uh, I would like to know the number of modes required in order to, uh, to, uh, to achieve a given coupling efficiency. So uh, in order to do this, I develop an analytic approach faster than end-to-end -end existing simulation. Well, if you look at here, we have our first bidding block. So we are stopped on our demultiplexer device. So concerning the demultiplexer technology, we can, we can think, first of all, for, of a, in a, in a micro lens array. In this case, the pupil is decomposed into n subpupils, and the subpupils at, at the output, we have n single move fibers. Anyway, our, this first approach has no industrial pro process for, for coupling between the, the micro lens array and the array of single move fiber at the output. There is also a second approach called photonic uh, lantern. This is a new and interesting approach. However, it's a complex on fabrication process. But there is also a third approach that is called multiplane light conversion. As you, can, as you can see here, we have a reflection between a succession of face plate and a simple mirror. This is a passive and a compact system and also is, is industrially available. So as you see on the right of this, of, the, of this slide, you can see the compactness of the system. And this system use also a, a mode basis that is called Hermit Gaussian mode basis. Well, I would like to talk to you now about my, uh, the, the study of the average coupling efficiency. So the, our incoming, always our incoming disturbed beam can be written as some of our decomposed mode that I will call for now MI plus a residual term. So the coupling efficiency can be written as the square module of the sum of our overlap integral that I, that I told you before. We can also write that this overlap integral are, uh, are the integral of two different functions, the spatial coherent function of the field and the uh, intercorrelation product between our modes. So in my thesis, I evaluate two different set of modes, the Hermit Gaussian mode and also the Lager Gaussian mode. Anyway, with, with the same given number of modes, we are better performance, we can obtain better performance with Hermit Gaussian mode. That's for this, for this reason, I will talk throughout my, my presentation only about Hermit Gaussian modes. So here we are always at our first, first building block, the multiplexer device. And here we are the same formula, formula as before. Sorry. As a spatial coherent function of the field, you can see the formula here, and R0 is the free parameter. Well, here I plotted the normalized coupling efficiency function of the, on the D over R0. So D is the diameter of our telescope and R0 is the free parameter. As you can see, for the same level, for the same given coupling efficiency, in order to obtain the same given coupling efficiency, increasing the number of, increasing the parameter D over R0, you have to increasing the number of modes. So going to the right of this curve, to the figure, uh, to the green color, and so on. So 
I developed also, I found an analytical formula in order to, de to describe these curves. And you can see that it's not so different from a classical adaptive optics form. And in order to derive this uh, analytical, uh, this figure, I used a simplified analytical approach comparing different set of modes, as you can see in this figure. Well, we can also think to use an image stabilization before our demultiplexer device. So the same formula as before now can be written with an outer, with another spatial cohesion fun fun function that now is called IS as image stabilization. I plotted the same figure as before, but I would like to show you the gain brought by image stabilization comparing without image stabilization. So as you can see, with the high number of modes and looking about 1,000 or more and, more and and less, we have a gain brought by the image stabilization about 1.5. And with less number of modes than 36, so the, the yellow curve, we have, we have a gain higher than 1.5. But anyway, uh, given an, um, if we have a given set of modes, is this the best, the most suitable set of modes for our mode decomposition? That's what I'm presenting in this slide. So in order to evaluate uh, the best set of modes, I performed an eigen mode decomposition. So I, um, I derived a covariance matrix of the Hermia Gaussian mode set of modes. And here you can find the turbulence and the turbulence energy distribution for a given set of modes. So for 16 Helmut Gaussian modes, we can see the overlap integral, the coupling efficiency per mode for a set of for, for a set of 16 Helmut Gaussian modes. And you can see that this spectrum is almost constant. But also if we have, we have a look to the eigenvalues function, function of the eigenvalue index for two different turbulence cases, we can find that we have an almost uniform spectrum, so a first re regime that is almost constant until d over L0 squared value of, over, of d over L0, sorry. So can, we, can, we can state that our, our modes, our matrix is a nearly diagonal, diagonal covariance matrix, and also that our Hermit Gaussian modes are nearly the most suitable set of modes. In this case, I would like to see if we can improve our coupling efficiency evaluation with our uh, eigenmodes decomposition. So here you can find always our coupling efficiency function of sum of a given set of modes. So the violet curves is the eigenmode decomposition, and then comparing the eigenmode decomposition without image sampleization with all with a, with different set, sorry, of uh, Hermit Gaussian modes. And as you can see, we have almost no gain between the eigenmode decomposition and our Hermit Gaussian modes. I made, and I made also the same analysis for image stabilization. And as you can see, we have only a few percent gain between the, the, the Hagen modes and our Hermit Gaussian modes. So as I said, we have a small gain compared to an image stabilization. And we can use, we can state that we can use our Hermit Gaussian modes as uh, instead of the optimized modes. And this is the object, of, the object of, a, of, a, of a paper, sorry, that I submitted to Optics Express. Now we can have a look to the fluctuation of our coupling efficiency. So what about our fact, the fluctuation of the coupling efficiency? In order to perform this study, I made a Monte Carlo simulation, so an end-to-end -end simulation, in order to validate, first of all, my analytical model, uh, to simulate a perfect peak, so a photonic integrated circuits with a phase and amplitude correction, and also with a phase-only correction. So in this simulation, I used a cold developed at the Onera in order to simulate the propagation through the atmospheric tur turbulence called Turando. Turando. I also coupled this this code with the Eigen mode decomposition with sorry with the Hermit Gaussian mode decomposition, and I performed a, co a perfect peak, per perfect photonic integrated circuit, so a coherent combining building block. Well, we can evaluate here the coupling efficiency with a telescope diameter of 25 centimeters. In this case, you can see the coupling efficiency fun function of the number of, of temporal occurrences and uh, uh, for an amplitude and phase control and for a set of 16, always 16 of Hermit Gaussian modes. So in the red dotted line, you can see our average coupling efficiency. Well, you can also see our threshold value or sensitivity value. But if we have a look at the cumulative distribution function of a perfect correction, 
So only looking at the flux coupled uh, collected by the pupil telescope, we can see that we are almost on our green, green line. What does it mean? It means that if we have a look on the amplitude of phase control in a, in a, in a photonic antiquity circuits, well, we are over our green line, our threshold value. So first of all, I validated my analytic approach. But anyway, yes, with the comparing compared to the fluctuation, I can reduce the fluctuation also using this telescope diam diameter. And in order to do this, I have to increase my number of modes. So, well, uh, we can increase the number of modes, but increasing the number of modes, that means that we are, we are increasing the complexity of our first block, the, the multiplexer device. So we are, we, are, we are increasing, we can also increase the telescope diameter. That's what I'm presenting now. So we have a telescope diameter of 50 centimeters, and in order to, to obtain the same coupling efficiency, we, we have now to consider a set of 50 Hermit Gaussian modes, always with our amplitude effa phase control. So if you remember my, my, first per, my, my first part, for a given coupling efficiency, in order to obtain a given coupling efficiency, if you increase the telescope diameter, you have to consider a high number of modes. That, that's why I'm considering now 50 Hermit Gaussian modes. But as before, we can have a look to the cumulative distribution function of a perfect correction. So considering only the flux collected by the telescope pupil. And in this case, we are far from our th threshold value. And also with our amplitude phase, phase control with the same set of Hermit Gaussian modes. Anyway, now in the, in, the, in the analysis that I made before for a telescope diameter of, tw of 25 centimeter, we have in order to have less fluctuation, I told you that we have to increase our number of Hermit Gaussian modes. But also in this case, we have increased our Hermit Gaussian modes with considering a set of 15 Hermit Gaussian modes and also considering a larger telescope diameter. So when our system is considered to be to, to improve the, the efficiency, so I, I told you in my introduction, when increasing the telescope diameter, so when our system is better with, re with respect to our, to our scintillation is also complex. So can we see that is the best the, the, that the system is interesting in presence of scintillation? So at the end, can we see, can we say, sorry, can we say that is the best implementation scenario? Well, I performed here also, as I told you before, uh, the phase-only correction on our photonic integrated circuit. So here you, you can see the same figure as before, but in order to have uh, the phase, we, we can consider, sorry, a phase only control with the same set of Hermit Gaussian modes, but you can see that we never reach, we, we can never reach the same average coupling efficiency. So in order to, to reach the same coupling efficiency, I have to increase the number of Hermit Gaussian modes considering a phase only correction with respect to the amplitude of phase control. Anyway, you can you you can also well understand that we have the same degrees of correction. So amplitude of phase control with the 50 Hermi Gaussian modes and phase only control with the hundred of Hermi Gaussian modes. But you can also see that we have on phase only control a lot a, a reduction of the, fl the fluctuations. Well, I performed all this analysis in the last part of my on my thesis, and further analysis need to be carried out considering all the performance of the link. I would like to leave you this part with the with the with my trade-off between the complexity of the multiplane light conversion or the complexity, so high number of modes, or the complexity of the photonic integrated circuit. So the amplitude and phase control compared to the phase-only control. So as a conclusion of this part, I derived an analytical approach in order to estimate the average coupling efficiency function of the number of modes. And in this case, I you, I, you can see that uh, the Hermit Gaussian modes are nearly the optimal set of modes for, uh, in order to describe the effect of atmospheric turbulence, but also we have a small gain of eigenmodes decomposition, as I, as I told you before, compared to any mass stabilization before our demultiplexer device. And this is the object of a paper. I also performed the Monte Carlo simulation, so an end-to-end -end simulation, in order to evaluate the effect of our fluctuations on the coupling efficiency. And I validated, first of all, my analytical approach, and also, we evaluate our uh, we we evaluated our uh, instant, instantaneous fluctuation of the coupling efficiency. So, in presence of scintillation, we have to increase our number of modes, 
and we'll, that our system at the end is complex. Let's have a look now to the second part. So the temporal analysis on the correction loop. So we have, we have already achieved the first part, so the number of modes. And I would like to talk now to the temporal error related to the photonic antiquated circuits and the feedback loop. So I need to determine the amplitude to the phase that, that the peak, the amplitude of the phase, sorry, that the peak needs to correct. So we can evaluate a set of, of 16, always 16 Hermi Gaussian modes. And here you can find for the first overlap coefficient of this Hermi Gaussian mode set, set of modes, the full, the full phase. So here is a phase of a, of a, peak, of a peak to a photonic antiquated circuit that can perform an infinite correction. So a perfect photonic antiquated circuit. And if you if we have a look to a, sorry, a, spa, a power spectral density of this phase, we can find a cutoff frequency on the order of magnitude between 10 and 100 of hertz. But we also have, we, we, we can also have a look to the last overlap coefficient of our model decomposition, so the S15. And if we, we, if we do the power spectral density of this phase, we can find always a frequency that is higher, a little bit higher as be, uh, compared to before. This is why considering, this is because considering a, a set of Hermit Gaussian modes, so a higher uh, overlap integral, we have a lot of loops and we have a lot of high frequency that will appear. And in this case, as I said, as I told you before, we have a cutoff frequency or the order of magnitude of 100 of Hertz. But now we can make the hypothesis of a real peak or a real photonic antiquated circuits that can perform a correction between in a, in a range of a, of, a, of a two pi. So we can consider now a wrapped phase for our first Hermit Gaussian mode coefficient. And if we have, we have a look now to the power spectral density of this wrapped phase, we can see that our frequency are, are uh, series uh, uh, increased. So we have an almost flat spectrum with the frequency, we cut off frequency of the order of magnitude of thousands of hertz. That means that our bandwidth is of the order of magnitude of several kilohertz. So you can well understand that our temporal aspect is our, our critical points. In order to reduce this point, we can, we can deal with our feedback loop control, but also with our photonic antiquated circuits. So as conclusion of this mode part, I estimated the phase that the peak needs to correct. So I estimate the case of the full phase shift, and we have a cutoff frequency between 10 uh, hertz and 100 of hertz, and I also estimate the case of a rapid phase shift. So in a range of two pi, in a, considering a real peak, and we have a cutoff frequency that are now increased on, on the order of magnitude about a kilohertz. We can also see that our maximum frequency, that the maximum frequency of our feedback loop control is one over the number of modulation and the, the time re response of a photonic antiquated circuits, where in which the hour modulation are or the order of magnitude or about tens. Well, in order to increase our maximum frequency, we can again act on the feedback loop or act on the time response of our photonic antiquated circuits. So let's have a look now to a way in order to accelerating our feedback loop. In order to accelerate our feedback loop, I propose a new control loop uh, with less bandwidth demand well suited for photonic antiquated circuits application. So I used, uh, I didn't have the photonic antiquated circuits that we developed at the time, and I test this new control loop on a deformable mirror. So you can, you can see as a byproduct, first of all, I developed a new sensorless approach, AO sensorless approach, so without a wavefront sensor. So as you can see here, the, the, the distorted beam is reflected from a deformable mirror, is sent to a multiplexer device, and then we have, our, we have our control loop. So our control loop, is, is now not about the photonic antiquated circuits, but, but directly on the deformable mirror. So we use now all the output of our special of our special division multiplexer device. So I develop a new control algorithm using all this kind of uh, uh, demultiplexer output. I develop a, a simulation tool in order to evaluate this performance of the uh, of this algorithm, and also I test this system on a laboratory bench. So. As the principle of the algorithm, we can see that we, we can say that our phase, that our uh, incoming beam can be written at exponential term on the phase on the deformable mirror. 
We can also write that the signal on an one single moon fiber can be written as a square value of, of our phase, function of the square value of our, of our phase. But we can also write a wavefront on the deformable mirror where a k at the amplitude of the decay actuators that we have. And by adding a modulation, we are able to linearize our, our problem and to have a linear relation between our output signals and DDM actuators, so the deformable mirror actuators. But which kind of modulation we can, we can use? Well, if you remember well the set of Henry Gaussian modes, I proposed a modulation that is the sum of a 45 tilt and the defocus aberration. This is because in order to, in, to excite the Hermi Gaussian mode 0i, as, as an example, I have to use a tilt aberration on the y direction. And in order to excite all the Hermi Gaussian mode i0, I have to excite all the Hermi Gaussian mode on the x direction. So I, I have to use an x tilt. And in order to, uh, to excite all the Hermi Gaussian modes that are centrosymmetric, I have to use a defocus aberration. Well, I also use my simulation Earth tool in order to study the performance of our control algorithm. So here we have a tip tilt perturbation on the deformable mirror phase. And after our algorithm, we have the estimate of the perturbation. And we can also see the signal after correction function of the amplitude of the perturbation. And I made the same analysis for the defocus aberration. So as you can see in this both figure, for an amplitude of the perturbation about 0.4 radians of the signal, we have that our linear hypotheses are still valid. Well, as I told you before, I performed a, a bench in the in laboratory. So here we have our, our laser source, our fiber collimator, and the light is reflected on the deformable mirror and goes to the multiplane light conversion. And here we have uh, our photodiodes. So as setup characteristics, I use as a spatial multiplexing a multiplane light a 15 modes multiplane light conversion device using an Hermi Gaussian mode basis again. As a deformable mirror, I used an Alpao 88 actuators. And as a coder system, I participated to the development of the Hinout soft software, software sorry, built with LabVIEW and IDL. So the hypothesis of this bench are really simple. We have in our input a Gaussian modes, and without aberration, we are exciting only one mode the Hermi Gaussian 0, 0. So the Gaussian mode in the set of our Hermi Gaussian modes. Also, we can perform the optimization of this only one excited mode. So the S0, the signal associated with our first Hermi Gaussian mode using, first of all, an algorithm that is the SPGD algorithm. So here you can see our, our signal function of the modulation that we, have, that we applied and the convergence leave. So we would like to measure the time uh, to the, given to the algorithm in order to reach our, our convergence level. And adding the perturbation that is on the order of 20% of the perturbation. So if you remember well, we are still in our regime of linearity. We are that the, SB, the SPGD, we have that the SPGD convergence time is about few tenths of iteration that is quite slow compared to a classical adaptive optic system without a wavefront sensor. But also, we can use all the output of our spatial division multiplexing device, as I told you before. So here we have the same signal with fun function of the modulation of our convergence level. And adding a perturbation of about 10 or 20% of the perturbation, we have that with our spatial diversity algorithm, we can reach the convergence time on about only one iteration. So I experimentally demonstrated the spatial diversity algorithm and is ready to use with the photonic integrated circuit. And this is the a paper that I presented at Photonic West conference just last year. Well, I will also like following my, my work, Jan Lucas started his thesis last October 2021. So we would like now to study, to study sorry, the best modulation compared to the noise propagation. So in order to derive a modulation that is uh, the best one compared to the noise propagation, we have to minimize the variance of the phase. So we have to minimize the eigenvalues that I plotted here. So we derived a simulation considering 21 actuators and on, the, on a deformable mirror 
in which each actuator can take the value 0 or 1. So at the end, we have 2 power 21 combination of actuators. And at the end, what we derive is a spatial diversity modulation that is mainly due to a tilt on the x direction, a tilt on the y direction, and as you can see, a defocus aberration. It is not far from the modulation that I proposed at the beginning. But we also derive the spatial diversity, the, uh, sorry, the variance of the phase with our spatial diversity algorithm. And we can see that it's seriously better compared to a Shakartman, uh, to a Shakartman, to the variance of, uh, of, of a Shakartman considering the same number of sub pupils. And this is normal because we are here in a few aperture game. And this is an oral talk that Jan Luc Lucas made just his, uh, this year to a wavefront sensing conference. So as a conclusion of this part, I first of all proposed a multi-output approach, so a spatial diversity approach, considering all the single the, the fiber at the output of our spatial multiplexer device, and so considering only one modulation applied to all our, our, our channels. Sorry. And also, I, I demonstrated an experimental validation of, the, of this algorithm. So I, I applied to a, this algorithm to a deformable mirror and the multiplane light conversion as a byproduct, I test a new sensorless adaptive optics approach. So I demonstrated the convergent time of only, by, of only about uh, one modulation. And this is the paper at the Fotonic West conference. We also studied through the Jan Lucas thesis, the, the study of notch propagation to the modulation that we applied. And this is the presentation that the Jan Lucas made last year, this year, sorry. So now we are on the last part of my thesis. So the impact of the, the number of modes and the temporal analysis on the photonic integrated circuit. Well, here I would like to study two different materials. A silicon nitride-based photonic integrated circuits developed by K-Labs and provided at the Onera in the framework of a CNES uh, research project. But also I participated in the development of the new to new based photonic integrated circuits developed in collaboration to the Femto Estate and the uh, EPAG laboratories. So I characterized the time response of a silicon nitride uh, phase shifter, and I made the first test of a lithium, on, on a lithium based peak. We will see it. So this is the bench of our, this is our photonic integrated circuit. This is our laboratory bench. And here you can see our multiplane light -like conversion device. So here I study the time response of the only one max center interferometer and only one phase shifter. So on the silicon nitride photonic integrated circuits, we have a thermo optic effect. So heating our phase shifter, we will have a change on the phase. So the voltage is now square. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a relation that is square voltage of the phase. So I measure the time response of this phase shifter. I hope that you, you can see the figure, not so well. Uh, so I measure the time res response of our photonic integrated circuits that is about over 100 or microseconds. Well, this is a limit of our frequency max that, that, that I told you before. And this is also a slow time re response compared to what we found in literature. Well, as I told you before, I also participated to, to the development of a silicon, uh, sorry, a lithium based photonic integrated circuits. This circuit is, um, is mainly uh, given by an uh, derived uh, with an electro optic effect. So heating, applying a voltage, we will have a, fa uh, a change on our ref refractive index of the material and a change on the phase. So we develop different architecture. The first one, only based with the, a phase only correction and all the single the, the couplers, sorry, and another one with the, an amplitude and phase correction. So we can see the amplitude, the active amplitude modulation on here. So the electrode in order to, uh, to achieve an amplitude uh, on the modulation. So we have the simplicity of our first approach and a little bit complexity uh, on our um, second approach. So considering phase and amplitude modulation. Well, this is our peak photonic integrated circuits in lithium bait that arrived just last week. So I made the first measurements on these photonic integrated circuits, and we can find the insertion lo losses from a theoretical value of 9 dB to a value to a measured value of 12, B, 12 dB. But I'm sure that we, that we can do also better. Well, I, me I measured also the half-wave voltage, so the voltage in order, in order to have a phase shift of the order of pi 
and we have we we can start from a theoretical value in the range of 10 volts and 12 uh, 20, 22 volts sorry and uh, we have a measure value of, of about 13 volts well as conclusion of this part i test the time response of a silicon nitride based photonic integrated circuit so i derive a time response of about 100 of microseconds and also I participated to the development of the lithium of a lithium based eight channel photonic integrated circuit, and we developed different architecture. And also, I measured. I participated to the first measurement of this device. So neither the two uh, photonic integrated circuits that we are studying seem to provide a satisfactory satisfactory answer to the recombination power of our scenario of interest. So as a conclusion. First of all, I study the coupling error, so the coupling efficiency related to the mode decomposition, so the demultiplexer uh, block. I analyze, I analyze the, uh, I develop, sorry, a, tool, a faster tool for the uh, assessment of the average coupling efficiency. So I uh, put in advance the importance of an uh, image stabilization before our um, spatial division multiplexer device compared to Eigenmode decomposition, as I told you before. And this is the object of the paper that I submitted to Optic Express. But I also study the temporal aspects, so the phase that the, the photonic antiquated circuits need to correct. And we have seen that with the, with the phase range of 2 pi, we have a several kilohertz on our bandwidth. So I perform, I propose a new approach, so a spatial diversity approach. This is the object of a Photonic West conference and the thesis of Jan Luca. I also test a silicon nitride photonic integrated circuits and the lithium based one that we develop with the Femmes State and the EPAC laboratory. As a perspective, there is a thesis, as the thesis, as I, as I told you before, of Jan Lucas. So in this thesis, we are searching to develop an end-to-end -end simulation considering all our devices. So the multiple inlet conversion and the photonic integrated circuits divide, but also considering, considering the temporal effects. So we have the test, we have to do the test and the optimization of our spatial diversity control law in a closed loop. And we can implement the, uh, our uh, silicon nitride, so our photonic integrated circuits on a, piccolo on a piccolo bench that is a laboratory bench used at the Onera in order to simulate the effect of the atmospheric turbulence. But also we can develop, we can develop a photonic integrated circuits for a real system. So increasing, first of all, the number of channels, so the, num the number of wa waveguides, but also increasing at the same time, the response time. And we can adapt this architecture to the requirement of a real optical link. And I would like to leave you with my communication. So thank you for your attention. for comments and questions. So I will ask first, maybe, uh, ask Antonella Durazio. Uh, Pablo, uh, actually, sorry, I, I'm... We may have to reconfigure a bit the, the yep. microphone. We have to reconfigure the so microphone for the, the, for the jury. Can, the jury so, online can... <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you just have to yeah, use now sure. the... You will use now the... Okay, the... Hi, do you hear me from the jury? Yeah. Uh, you okay. Have, you okay. Will but they will uh, they will hear from another one, okay. so don't worry. Um, and no, I heard from Sorry? Sorry. Hi. Do you hear? No, yeah, I, I, I okay. can just conduct it. Okay, then it's not Yes, I think we can already continue. Professor Donadio, do you hear us? Yes. I heard the, uh, her, but you, you, maybe you have to, to increase the. Uh, Hello? Okay, uh, sorry, Professor, so we are, we are dealing with them. Okay, okay. do you hear us? Thank you. 
Do you hear me from the journey? Okay. Okay. Okay, we are we are you. Okay. Professor Dorazio, so we this is to you for uh, comments and questions. You, you were the, uh, the, one of the two reporters, so uh, we hear you. Uh, I have a question for Luca, and uh, um, the first is, uh, is this. The unique motion modes are the only modes that you can uh, consider in uh, the decomposition of modes. Okay. Although you can consider other modes uh, such as the Berger motion. Sure. Um... Do you see my presentation? Do you see my, my presentation from the jury? There are problems. I don't hear why. Well. Yeah, yeah. The voice is far away. Okay, you have to use the. Okay. Sorry, do you hear me? Okay. okay. So, I would uh, like to know if uh, it is possible uh, to consider uh, other uh, modes, uh, such as Lagarde uh, Gaussian modes, uh, in uh, the decomposition sure. before. Okay, okay so, so you are able, able to, to see, see my, my slides? slides? No, look, you have to... Yes. I'm sorry. sorry. I get to or make it a presentation. Okay. 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 So uh, I will make like, like, like this. I can try to. So, so here, here um, uh, in order to answer the, to the to the question, uh, here we have our cumulative sum of uh, k eigenvalues. So without image stabilization and with image stabilization, I said before that, uh, yes, the gain brought, but our emic Gaussian mode, so we can, sorry, um, if my, my, my laser, okay. The gain brought by the red, uh, red line or the yellow one are nearly zero compared to the eigen modes decomposition. And also the same things uh, we have for the we have the same thing for the with image stabilization. That means that the, that the gain between the maximum that we can do, so the eigen modes decomposition and our Hermi Gaussian modes are nearly zero. So are the most set for eigen modes decomposition. But this is for uh, we have the our covariance matrix is uh, dependent from the d over r zero. So we have to consider yes different value of d over r zero. As an example, this is the value of d over zero about five, but also we can see, sorry, um, we can see another value on uh, d over r zero of about 10, and we have the same behavior. So the Hermit Gaussian mode seems to be the well modes for mode decomposition. And as I said in my presentation, I performed the same analysis so the evaluation of the coupling efficiency comes considering a set of Lagrange Gaussian modes. So in order to consider the same for the same set of uh, Hermit Gaussian modes, let's say in a different way, in order to obtain the same coupling efficiency for a set, we have to consider a set of Lagrange Gaussian modes that is twice the set of our Hermit Gaussian modes. So this is another analysis that I made uh, in my thesis. So I studied the comportment, yes, the behavior, sorry, uh, of the Lagrange Gaussian set of modes. If this answer uh, to the question, you're welcome. Okay. You know, if uh, the selection of uh, materials is any impact on uh, the combination of the different guided modes. You heard the question? 
Okay, uh, she said uh, if the material has an impact on the coherent recombination, so on the photonic integrated circuits. Okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I well understood. Well, um, the material or a photonic integrated. I see. I see. Uh, I heard a lot of echo. Um, okay. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm. Uh, I have trouble with the with the person in presence. So, uh, yes. Uh, sure. The impact of the material of our photonic integrated circuits is a, is a problem. Uh, let's say is a key aspect on our mode the model room modes decomposition not on mode recomposition sorry on the mode recombination that's the word so uh, as an example if we take a silicon nitride or different kind of uh, photonic integrated circuits technology we can have different behavior as an example in the you, we well know that with the lithium ion uh, photonic integrated circuits it's difficult to reach uh, the 50 uh, channels, so the 50 hemigaussian modes at the output of our demultiplexer device that I, that I said in my presentation. But there are a lot of trade-offs in this sense because, uh, yes, the lithium obate, on the other hand, has a large, so a high speed, uh, a high bandwidth. So in this sense, uh, it performs very well. Uh, but also, on the other hand, we have on, uh, he has um, an, uh, um, Contrast index that is low compared to the uh, to the silicon nitride. So on silicon nitride, we can have more compact compactness. So we can achieve a large number of channel, a large number of modes. But also we are some limitation on our time response because we have a thermal phase shifter. So maybe it's not the same in thermal bandwidth. So yes, the material is very important in our in our trade off in choosing the best material platform. And uh, uh, yes, there will be a lot of perspective in this sense. You're welcome. No other questions. Okay. okay. Please, thank you very much. So now uh, let's hear the second reporter, Jean-Philippe Berger from the Grenoble. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Luca. I really like the presentation. You had a good energy, and uh, I think you extracted well uh, the content of your PhD. I also appreciate it that you took into consideration the comments I made in my report. So, basically, what I would like to. So what I would like is to take a step back. I, I see that in your PG you've done lots of, you've tackled lots of problems, simulation, experimentation, atmosphere, adaptive optics, uh, photonic integrated circuits. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting ensemble. And I thank you because you allowed me to discover a new topic. Uh, so my, my questions are more mostly uh, questions for some, someone from someone that doesn't know the topic is, first of all, my understanding is that uh, you, you compare initially different uh, type of polynomials and, and, and focus on the Hermit Gaussian. My understanding is that in, in the telecom, free space telecom range, the Laguerre la, la, la Gaussian goes on. So, can you make yourself there when you're not speaking? No, no, no. So you, you seem to rule out the Laguerre Gaussian mode just because of the less um, the, the harder it is to, to couple a uh, signal, or well, you need more modes to couple the signal. But in, in fact, my understanding is that they're more robust to crosstalk. So is the, is there a way um, that you could imagine that Laguerre Gaussian modes could be uh, a better way, uh, and, and not a, a, the other in the the bottom line of the question is, is there a different technology that would allow to handle this type of modes? With, mode? with the Lager Gaussian mode? Yes. Okay, or so... Are we restricted to... Did your choice was made because the technology forces you to go to Hermit or 
uh, all the Lagrange notion also a technology that is um, uh, doable in terms of practice and also because it's more robust in terms of use. Okay, so the answer is if we can use also our Lagrange Gaussian modes on our. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so the question is if we can use also the Lager Gaussian modes and we are only restrained to our M and we are only restrained to our Emmy Gaussian modes. And uh, I didn't understand the cross talk effect no, in the I, photonic integrated circuits. My understanding was that in theoretical application, M Lager Gaussian modes are more robust to cross talk effects. So uh, the, the thing that you lose in terms of coupling efficiency you might gain because you have a better. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't. Uh, I didn't hear you well. Uh, I, I can hear. Uh, it, there are a lot of echo, and it's impossible to un to understand well. Remove the. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I, I can I can show the simple question. <laughs> um, so my question is really about um, whether. You have, you have compared different sets of. My mm -hmm. understanding is that in the te telecom world, uh, Lagrange Gaussian modes are um, mostly preferred because they are more robust to propagation. So the fact that you find in your analysis is that uh, Hermit Gaussian allows you to have a better coupling efficiency. Uh, so, and that is that what only the thing that drives your choice, or is it because there is no technology of special demultiplexing that allows to handle all types of modes? Are we restricted by technology? To okay. Okay. Well. Um, okay. The answer to the question is no, either yes or no. It, it depends. So um, first of all, about the 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 choice. Uh, yes, in my in my thesis, I analyze these two different modes, and with my analysis, it seems that our Hermit Gaussian modes. It's best suited in order to describe the, uh, the atmospheric turbulence. So for the lobes and so on, maybe it's it's uh, well suited for the description of uh, atmospheric tu turbulence. But we are not restricted to Hermit Gaussian modes. I mean, I demonstrated that we have to use twice the number of Lagrange Gaussian modes in order to uh, to obtain the same given coupling efficiency. But I mean, uh, the multiplane light conversion of k labs as an example, can use at the same time all the uh, or the Hermit Gaussian modes. Or uh, also the Lagrange Gaussian modes, so can be possible, sure. Also on the photonic integrated circuits. So further analysis need, needs to be carried out on this sense. I I totally agree. And uh, also about the cross talk. No, it's, it's okay. Okay. Uh, I had a certain question with you, which would also show my ignorance. So you've you've spent quite an energy on, on reducing the, the flux dropouts, and my I would like to understand uh, better. What is the, the link between these flux dropouts and the big error rates that you mentioned? Okay. Uh, because there, this, there is a high price tag in order to reduce these uh, this flux dropouts. And is it really, how is it impacting the, the uh, rate of uh, information tra transfer? Okay. So um, in this case, um, well, in my thesis, we choose only one scenario. So with the French Aerospace uh, Agency, the, the CNES, which was only one scenario, the Leo to ground satellite link at 10 degrees of elevation. So which was only one scenario with the, compared to a lot of applications that we can choose. And in this, say, in the, in this sense, the, um, we can derive a, a given bit error rate that has an impact on our threshold value. So on the, on the fluctuation that you said before. So yes. Uh, we can reduce, uh, there is no, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, we are not, our, our choice is not uh, the only one, I mean. We can choose another um, value of the link margin, another value of energy coupling efficiency, and so on. We are not uh, limited in this analysis. I choose only one scenario, and with this scenario, I derived a threshold value, and I, and I work with this. So, 
if if this answer to the, to the, to the question. Um, You're welcome. I have another question on the, on the global chain. So you have this. Uh, you're supposed to have an algorithm that uh, uh, eventually will uh, handle the, the wave from correct the wave from in order to to have a stable and, and efficient wave. And I was wondering uh, whether you in your the way you handle at the end of the peak. Do you consider all the technological deficiency that a photonic integrated uh, circuits can have? So I, I'm thinking about crosstalk between channels. I'm thinking about uh, chromaticity of the response, the balance between the talkers. How is it, how is this kind of approach resistant to technological parameters? And how, when you work with people like Guillermo or others that design chips, how do you um, Specify to them the requirements on the technology based on your requirements on wavefront control. Okay, it's totally clear. Okay, um, well, this is about the same answer. Um, okay, this is about the same answer as before. So, um, yes, there are a lot of problems, as you say, there are a lot of um, aspects that we have to, con to consider the cross tool, the chromaticity, and so on. In our case, uh, as I said be before, so I'm, I would like no, not only to, to, to say the, the same thing, but uh, um, in our scenario, we are considering only one wavelength. So talking with Guillermo I'm as trying, an... I'm, trying, I'm asking you to project yourself, not in the future. When you, you will develop chips, you have to um, okay. you know, it's, it's not only for this scenario. Is, is there a way that the requirements from your experience are necessary in order to better define the control matrix on Okay, uh, so uh, yes, the question uh, is, if I would like to develop another photonic integrated circuits for a different kind of application, how can I specify it to, to yeah. Guillermo as an example? What, this what, is the... what are the important things okay. that so, you want to avoid, that you, that in the control loop, you are affected by many effects? Mm -hmm. So you, sure. you need to specify one subsystem, which is a chip. So sure. From, so from your experience, what would you do? Okay. So um, the first thing is, is the is the phase, as I as I as I told you in my presentation, that the peaks need needs to correct. So the phase of the turbulence incoming beam is strictly related to the material platform. So the time re response and so on. So we have to. Uh, we have to deal with the, with the trade-off between the, the material platform, I, I don't know what the material is, uh, and the, the phase that the peak needs to correct. But also we have to, to deal, as, as you said, with the chromaticity problem, uh, with the crosstalk. Well, about the crosstalk, um, I mean, uh, if we develop the photonic integrity circuits, uh, is, um, we, are sh we, we have to make sure that we have crosstalk that are negligible, I mean. Because um, I mean, on uh, on our photonic integrity circuits, uh, we can have less. Uh, we, we can have sure uh, problems on our couplers. So on the bending ready, because our our architecture, as an example, is a three-like manner architecture. So we don't have straight line. We have bending ready. So yes, we have a lot of aspects that we have to see and we have to specify to people as a as a Guillermo. So the length, the, the length. It is strictly related to the number of channel and the number of recombination, the phase shift. So uh, how we can apply the voltage, how we can change our phase, the cross talk between the the photonic integrated circuits. So we can we can specify the photonic integrated circuits in this sense, iterating on these small aspects. Uh, yeah, two last questions. Sure. So in your analysis on the command low. In your analysis on, on the command law, you are you place yourself in the linear regime, so it, the phase is already small. small so can you comment on what is your strategy to do the initial lock? So you, you need to go down to, to reduce this, this sure. situation. So well, in, your, in your PG, you describe you have, we have to tackle that. So I'd like to hear you about yeah. how, how would you do that. Well, is an interesting, very interesting question. I mean. Um, in fact, is um, you mean the the way to uh, close the loop? Yeah. 
So in this case, we use an SPGD algorithm, but I mean, this is seriously a perspective of the, of the work of Jan Lucas. So yes, we have to develop as a perspective, we have to study, uh, we have to couple better our um, spatial diversity algorithm with an algorithm that closed the loop fast. As an example, in the thesis of Jan Lucas, we are, we are dealing with artificial intelligence that are faster at the beginning and slower uh, at the end. So yes, we have, we have to deal in our perspectives. My last question is, so you have this modulation mm -hmm. that you need to put that on the mirror. Mm -hmm. so is there a way you could put the modulation inside the SDM or the MPS? So modulating each node in phase or, or find or in the, in the, the photonic integrated shape. To avoid to modulate the phone mirror, or is okay. I, I no, I, I didn't understand the question, so uh, I don't understand. <laughs> no, my question was uh, if you, if you, I think it's modulation in modulation, mm -hmm. the mirror is making modulation. So, my, my question was whether you could turn the phase modulation that you put into the mirror into the single mode device. So, you, at the moment where you couple the light into the different fibers. You could think of having a phase shift inside that would reproduce the modulation of the different oh. Okay. No, no, I, I, I'm thinking about if, if, if I were understand because it's not easy to. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that. Okay, yes, yeah, sure. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Jean So now uh, let's hear the first examiner, Professor Goni. Do you hear us? Uh, just in this, I increase the volume of the loudspeaker. We hear you. Okay. Let's speak, that's okay. Okay, so thanks for the invitation and congratulations to Luna because the presentation has been done in a very good way, very convincing and clear. So, congratulations. And uh, so I have a uh, first question that are not technical actually, but uh, is more related to which has been your main contribution in all this work. I mean, in this work uh, there are some uh, simulation parts, uh, uh, analytical parts, and then the characterization. So in, uh, in your opinion, which is your main contribution in all this uh, work? Okay. okay. <laughs> Do you hear me? So, uh, yeah, about uh, the, um, the main contribution, I think that I uh, most contributed to the, to the first part that I show you in my presentation. So the part related to the paper that, that we, sub we submitted. So the demultiplexer device and the uh, analysis on the average coupling efficiency with respect to the uh, turbulence conditions. So this is for me the part, the part uh, sorry, that I, I contributed the most. But also I developed the simulation of the fluctuation in the last part of my thesis. And uh, also I proposed the algorithm and for the COVID pandemic, uh, we didn't have the possibility to test it on the photonic integrated circuits because it just arrived uh, and uh, I tested. So in uh, what I, I had in my laboratory, so on a deformable mirror and on a multiplane light conversion. Did you use an already developed simulator? And, uh, so you just use this, or you also continue to make some new part of the Yeah, no, no, no. In the, in the first part, the, the analysis on the average coupling efficiency on the number of modes, I developed an analytical simulation. So develop, I developed all the code, I mean. I, I was coding uh, this part in order to evaluate this kind of analysis. And I also developed at the same time, there are no existing codes uh, from the first part, the paper, and the Photonic West Conference, so the sensorless adaptive optics approach. I developed both this part. And, uh, if you could summarize the, which is the beyond the state of the art of this work? I mean, because you mentioned a lot of aspects, mm -hmm. and I'm a little bit lost uh, 
on the specific state of the art for uh, the specific part. So in your opinion, which is the main in innovative contribution of this work compared to the state of the art? Okay. Well, um, I think that uh, um, in my thesis, um, um, I mean, how can I say? Uh, yes, the as we can see, the aspects are, are various. I mean, we have a lot of aspects that, that we have to consider. And for me, this is the main goal of my thesis. So uh, with respect to the state of the art, we, did, we don't have any analysis on a on a series on a real uh, condition so we didn't have this work of a trade off between the parameter so until now we do, we didn't know if we have to choose a lot of number of modes if we have to deal with the temporal aspects uh, if we have to deal with so mm, in my opinion uh, the main goal is to give an answer in this sense yes so, which is the, the final um, uh, lesson learned of, of this? I mean, uh, uh, do you think that this approach could be a fit? I mean, if you started to consider also graphical problems uh, related to the real uh, link, but also to the real tools that can be used, the real technology. So, which is your opinion? Your analysis they know, sure. uh, is positive for the potential of the technique or not? Okay, um, in order to answer to this question, um, well, I have to say that, uh, uh, yes, as an example, uh, nowadays, a lot of people in literature are working on a, a wavefront sensor based on a spatial demultiplexing device. As an example, people are working on a photonic la lantern as a wavefront sensor. So in this case, the use of my approach on the sensorless adaptive optics approach can be really interesting. and on the other hand, we have our photonic integrated circuits. So in this case, uh, I think that the, the technology, um, it, it, can be, it can be further developed. So in this sense, we can improve our analysis because in my thesis, we consider only a prototype, only eight channel. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's not uh, a lot compared to, to what, what I presented in my, throughout my, uh, my presentation, but uh, the perspective uh, are interesting on this sense. I can show you, um, you see my slides? Okay, so uh, as an example, uh, here uh, we can have some perspective about the photonic integrated circuits. So as I, as I said in my presentation, we, have, we are limited on the number of channels, as an example. So we can choose uh, a technology uh, like the thin film lutein obate on insulator. So uh, this is the work of Lonkar uh, at Harvard. And uh, on the right, so on the second point, we can see the 3D uh, with guides on a photonic integrated circuits. So yes, we, have, uh, we can seriously improve the technology. So we can seriously improve the photonic integrated circuit, circuit but this is an aspect that has to be studied. Because it is more than silicon, uh, because it is able to produce a pure phase modulation, to phase control. Yeah, and, and also because it's it's um, uh, more uh, adapted adapted for uh, uh, the compactness. So with the thin film, we can achieve a large number of channels in our wafer. Sure. Well, uh, on this uh, on this aspect, we are far from our goal. So, an adaptive optic system has more or less uh, on the order of magnitude of 3 dB of losses, and there are photonic integrated circuits. We have 12 dB. So, uh, yes, we are far from uh, from our goal on on this aspect. And I mean, uh, yes, a number of channel surely um, sure can increase the the um, wafer. 
So uh, because if we have if we have an, a large number of channels, we need to recombine them. So we have a, a longer photonic integrated circuits, or we can also have a three D as an option, and we will have more lo losses. So yeah, the losses are seriously a critical point. Yeah, is the telecommunication one, so 1.55 uh, uh, micrometer. Yeah, well, um, sure. Um, we can divide, um, in this case, uh, my work into, into two different parts. So the first one that I said before is the, the sorry, is the uh, mode composition. So the, the simulation, the tool that I developed is a, is a tool that can be used in any case. I mean, it's a tool that can be used in any kind of, of, of simulation. Comparing uh, compared to the photonic integrated circuits and the analysis of our fluctuation, yes, we have to we can consider uh, angle angles of um, elevation that are higher, as an example, and we will have we we will uh, be less affected on our, on our turbulence ca cases. But I mean, um, the study of my of my of my aspects is a is a goal. Because in our aspects, the multiplane light conversion, the photonic integrated circuits, can give um, a better impact. But as I, as I told in my presentation, this impact comes at the expense of a complexity. So if we choose an angle of variation that is higher, yes, we have to see if our aspects is good compared to an adaptive optics one, as an example. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much. We now have a guest, Daniel, uh, Mathieu Didier from Knes. Thank you. So just wait for the speaker. Thank you, Luca. I have a chance to, to follow your PhD for, uh, since the beginning. Uh, for this presentation, I appreciate that you have a better, I think, better story than in the, in the manuscript. It's uh, good to have a better context for the presentation. I really appreciate that. Um, I agree with Antoine Labogoni on the key point on intercellular that is uh, not really detailed in the presentation. And, uh, the major drawback uh, today, compared to other systems. Sure. Do you have any idea on how uh, the number of modes impacts on the insertion loss? Because you, you tell us how the coping efficiency varies with the number of modes. How about the insertion loss? Yes, yes. well, um, com um, considering the number of modes, as I said before, uh, if we are considering a high number of modes, as in, in our application, we have to consider a circuit that is longer. So in this sense, sure, we will have large insertion lo losses. But we, 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 we have also deal to bending ready, as, as, as I said before, and a lot of our, our li little experts, like the, the couplers, but I mean, there is not that there is a way, but we can also think as an answer to an, a different architecture. I'm not saying that the two different architect architecture that I proposed in my, in my thesis are the only one. We can also think to another architecture in order to also reduce the insertion lo losses, to, to recombine in a different way the input modes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Yeah. Uh, uh, on the feedback loop is, um, is the bandwidth of the point control. Um, because when you do your modulation on the 12.0, you have a limitation to 0.7. Exactly. So how do you think you, what is the bandwidth you can obtain for correcting the turbulence with a bit compared to the classical uh, active optics? Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, <laughs> this is an interesting question also. Um, compared to the bandway, as I say in the presentation, um, onto the formable mirror, yeah, as, you, as you say, we have to, uh, without uh, our spatial diversity approach, we have to deal with, as an example, with an SPGD algorithm where we are doing some dithering. We have to modulate each actuator with a given frequency. So we have a large bandwidth. But with the spatial diversity one, we can apply only one modulation on the shape on the deformable mirror. And this approach can be applied to the photonic integrated circuits. In this case, we will have um, a matrix. So the, the relation between the, the input and outputs, I mean, that uh, they will be slightly better, better, sure, better than uh, with, the, with our deformable mirror approach. Because it's easy, um, you, we, we can have a look to, the, to the, our architecture to, um, to take uh, each output to each actuator. I mean, each act phase shifter is related to a given output. So it will be easy to apply our algorithm to uh, the photonic integrated sequence. And also it will be uh, better in terms of bandwidth. So yes. I, I, I think that it will be better. Okay, so I think for the, for the big two it's too difficult point today uh, to go further on this technology. Yeah. Um, as we see the future to uh, win a kind of MPLC plus peak, <laughs> how, do you see, how do you see it in the future compared to, for example, photonic lantern or compared to other solutions of uh, active optics? Do you think there's a, a future for this application or is there or limitations are too strong today to be competitive? In the future. Okay. Uh, well, it's only what I what I'm thinking. I mean, but uh, yeah, for me, we can use the multiplane light conversion in the future in this kind of application. Uh, we can also use the photonic la lantern. with depend on the technology. I mean, there are also photonic la lantern in li in literature. Sorry, I have a lot of echo. Uh, I don't hear. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, better. So we can also we can have in uh, in literature photonic lantern with a large number of modes. But as I said in the presentation, this is a critical aspect on the fabrication pro process. So I think that uh, the loss due to the multiplane light conversion uh, now are sorry also a critical point. But I mean it can be seriously improved. So for me there will be a future for this kind of a components. Yeah. I. I I think so. Okay, thank you, Mathieu. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another guest uh, examiner, uh, Nadej Kourjal uh, from Femco Lab. Uh, do you hear us? Uh, Nadej, 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 sorry, we don't hear you. Okay, maybe now. Uh, I'm the only one that can hear you. So now uh, I'm still the only one. <laughs> so let's keep waiting a while. <laughs> don't go. Sure, I, I can repeat. <laughs> Thanks. Look, I can set up here. Thanks.
Sorry, sorry, Nadesh. We, I can, uh, it's impossible to hear. Uh, no, no, Nadesh, I... Yes, yes, that's good. But you will hear him. Can you hear me? Ah, yes. No? I'm alone? Yeah, yeah. We hear you. I lost you, I think. No, no. Come on. No. Nadesh? But you have to... Yes. Is it okay? Yep. Okay. So, uh, so just I was congratulating um, Luca about his work, uh, about the specification uh, he clearly um, uh, ca he calculated and clearly sh showed. And uh, first, that, uh, by the, the test of three approaches. Uh, so it wasn't an easy task because, uh, for example, the peak came uh, only at the end of the thesis. So you have you to find uh, uh, alternatives and that's what you did and you did it well so congratulations for all of that okay. i have uh, just two questions about uh, uh, the future uh, because uh, yeah, it's a moving subject uh, yeah, there, there are many uh, ways that are possible that weren't especially possible at the beginning of your thesis the first one is what uh, uh, Mathieu mentioned about uh, photonic lanterns and 3D, uh, 3D integration. Uh, um, I'm wondering what do you think of a system that would integrate both the DIL multiplexer and the, the modulators? Um, so, for example, um, a dynamic photonic lantern. Do you see some, have you seen in the literature some? Um, some projects about such a pro uh, such approach. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so yes, uh, about the photonic la lantern. Yes, sure. Um, a dynamic photonic lantern, not a passive one, but a dynamic one that would integrate both the demultiplexer and but also modulating um, uh, possibilities. Yeah, I see also some paper about it. But there were not a lot of modes that were employed in this case. If I if I well remember, uh, there were not a lot of modes that were employed in this kind of application. So, uh, okay. yep. Yeah, if we have to to deal with a large number of modes, maybe the technology. Uh, I I it, it's very um, an interesting question because yes, uh, it, it's so interesting this kind of approach of the photonic lantern. I mean. And I really would would like to improve my my knowledge about it, but uh, um, yeah, uh, as far as I know, uh, there are, there are not a lot of modes in this approach, and uh, it seems that our uh, multiplane light conversion uh, until now it gives more advantages uh, with respect to the to the also to the dynamic photonic la lantern. I mean, yeah, it's a rising project, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a rising project. It's not mature enough. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And the second uh, alternative I would see is about the MPLC itself. So rather than you, uh, going toward integrated optics, uh, it would be uh, to integrate the modulators inside the MPLC. Uh, do you think it would be possible to, to replace the, fa the, um, uh, the screens inside the PMC, the, the phase screen inside the PLC, MPLC, sorry? Um, uh, to replace them with um, special light modulators. Yes, yes, I didn't, I didn't th th uh, think about it, but yes, yes, actually, it, it can be possible. I, I, I need, uh, we need further analysis on this. I mean, it, yes, it can be, it can be actually, it can be a good alternative. Uh, I we really have to study this kind of approach, but it, it, it seems good, it seems a good alternative. I mean, you're right. Yeah, because uh, special light modulators are also mm -hmm. uh, uh, in uh, in a move. <laughs> yeah, they, they, sure, with the micro with the micro. Are, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it, it, it can be further. Uh, there can be a further analysis also on this. I mean, sure. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, a it's a good topic. Uh, it's, a, it's a good topic. Uh, uh, it's quite, it's another approach, but yeah, I think in the future it could be uh, worth uh, seeing also at that. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so I, I thank you again. Uh, it was a pleasure to work with you, You're and welcome. I hope we will have other opportunities in the future. Me too, me too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Nadat. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, we have two reports left. Uh, we have two guest examiners, and we have two PhD advisors. 
So now uh, I will ask um, Vincent to, to comment, to ask questions if you want. No, thank you a lot about no question. It's okay. I will just move here. Can you hear me? Is it okay? No? Yeah. Yes, you think it's okay? It's okay. Um, okay, you can you can hear Vincent from the jury online. Can you hear me? Can you hear him from? Okay, oh my God. Oh, okay. So, do you hear him? Do you hear uh, Vincent, Alex? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, he does. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, go ahead. It's working. So first, of all, first of all, I would like to thank Luca for the, the work uh, he performed during this this thesis. Um, I was very happy to work with you, uh, Luca. It's uh, very pleasant uh, because of you, because of you. And I will stress also the 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 past which has been performed. Uh, I mean, uh, what has been done. To, um, between the beginning of your thesis and uh, the end of your thesis, uh, I, I'm aware that uh, at the very beginning we, we know nothing about uh, peak, real peak, we know nothing about uh, uh, the perturbations really, and uh, we knew uh, not, not a lot of things, in fact, just uh, the, the thesis before only uh, theoretical, but very simple uh, model. And so, at the beginning of your, your work, you have uh, plenty of uh, uh, information to, to work and to propose a new, uh, new, new development in the, in the direction of uh, control, and in the direction of peak, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, would, I would like to stress the work, the difference between the, the, the beginning and the end of the day. Um, I would like also to say that it was not so simple for you because um, all, of, all of us we know that uh, the time was not so easy for working because, and, and so perhaps uh, the, the, the work is made of small uh, studies because uh, each time it was, uh, it, was, it was difficult to plan a long study in fact in, uh, due to the to different reasons. And last of all, uh, all of that, I would like to, to thank Guillermo and um, Nadej for the involvement in the and for the, the, the work which has been performed all together because I think it's a, a real interesting uh, result. And no question. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <You're> right. <laughs> thank you. And uh, now Guillermo. So again, I will start by thanking Luca for all this work because it was really uh, a very variety of work from theoretical to experimental one. And uh, I was going to say exactly the same. As Vincent said, we started from a theoretical point of view. We started from scratch. There was no idea of what the peak could look like for you. So I, I think you have done the, the, the bridge between our two communities. And this is a, a really a very nice job because it's always hard to understand what the, you need and translate that into an architecture that is working. So the chip is there, it's beginning to work. And uh, my only comment is that now that we begin to understand what you need and you begin to understand what we can do, and what is feasible uh, practically, uh, we just have to sit again and draw it on different architectures, try 3D, try with the mm -hmm. silicon, lithium, diamond, thin films, etc., etc., and try uh, another one. 
another chip that will be uh, have have better insertion losses and better modulation voltage and so on. So thank you for all the work and uh, thank you for all the interesting discussions because I have seen uh, some transference with new ideas from PIC, 3D, etc. So it's really nice to see that uh, you were really reactive uh, concerning the hey why don't you look at that uh, technology mm -hmm. and so on and I have seen it in the in the slide so it's really nice. And uh, to finish, uh, thank you very much, Vincent, for inviting me to, to be part of this and for uh, to be here also because uh, after all these two years of COVID, it's really nice to be more or less credential uh, and uh, see, meet people again. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you too. Yeah. It was a pleasure to work with you. So uh, I'd like to conclude. Uh, I must confess, when I started reading your PhD thesis, your manuscript, I was a completely newcomer in the field because uh, I work on space instrumentation, so I have no problem of turbulence at all. And uh, I'm not coming from the telecom world, but from the astronomy world, and we work on broadband uh, spectral range. And uh, so I also had to learn a new acronym that's a bit difficult. And, uh, Space science loves acronyms. <laughs> and um, I have a question. Uh, from my astronomer's point of view, uh, what would a roadmap be if you want to transpose what you developed? For instance, your, your component applied to wave sensing. What a roadmap would do to transform this component to something working in broadband? OK. Okay, well, uh, do you hear me from the, the I don't know, from the jury online? Uh, hi, do you hear me? Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, this is also in, in a very interesting question. I have to, to hear? No, use it. Ah, okay. Yes, so yeah, um, is an interesting, an interesting question. I mean, um, yeah, we can also think to a broadband approach, like in astronomy. Um, I've seen a publication on uh, using a photonic lantern as a wavefront sen sensor, but also as a, a spectrograph uh, with the, with, re with, re with respect to the astronomy approach. I mean. So yeah, there are uh, there are a lot of plenty of application using a, a spatial division multiplexing as a photonic la lantern, also for broadband application, and for imaging and so on. So yeah, there will be there will be also the the publication that I've seen always employ not a lot of modes. I mean, also in this kind of application, but uh, uh, there are also photonic circuits that are dealing with a lot. To channel, let's let's say, uh, and broadband broadband application. So uh, sorry, we we'll lose one of the jury. Um, there is not the Antonella Dorazzo anymore. Yep. Uh, you are here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so yeah, at the end, yes, uh, we can use all. Uh, also, this approach is interesting also in astronomy, I think. Okay, but what the roadmap would be? What do you aiming to do? You're beginning to try to acrobatize the technique, you begin to increase the bound pass of the components uh, with, uh, to solve problem of dispersion. What do you mean? Well, uh, yeah. First of all, we we can uh, we can act on the on the chromatism pro problem on the photonic integrated circuit. Uh, we will be not so far uh, limited on uh, on on this approach, as far as I think, as I can can think. But uh, uh, in the roadmap, yes, we can deal again with uh, we we can deal with the number of channel. Uh, we can deal with this broadband, so with the different wave, wave, wavelength, and also, I think that we will have a different, uh, different, um, let's say, uh, aspect that we we have to consider on our photonic integrated circuits. If we if we, we consider a different wavelength, so um, yep, it would be interesting to to think about it, to to think how we can be translated to a spectro 
but also for uh, for astronomy. I mean. Okay. Um, I didn't mention it, but uh, I also fully appreciated your presentation, which is at the image of your manuscript, uh, direct, uh, sharp. Uh, sometimes for newcomers, uh, it lacks, uh, I, I would say, source. Uh, in order to help us understand the context and uh, the potential applications of uh, uh, of the world. I've got another question, and that's some, also something that you can feel when you read the manuscript. Um, it has no report to the technical aspect, but uh, how do you estimate the impact that the COVID crisis had on your work in terms of the way you work? So I understood that the peak circuits uh, came late, is it uh, directly an effect of COVID? Yes, I suppose. Yep. And uh, uh, how can you estimate uh, globally the impact? And uh, maybe you have a regret, maybe you have done, you would have done things differently uh, without this problem. Uh, can you comment on that? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Um some regret uh, no uh, but at the same time I, I I'm seriously sad to to relieve all the person in my in my team and the person that I work on because he is a, is a really interesting work uh, all of my thesis I was involved and uh, yes the impact of covid was not so easy uh, at the beginning because because there were the the first uh, uh, lockdown so it was no 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 one was understanding what's happening around you so it was, was very difficult also to to talk with my supervisor and so on but uh, we we managed we uh, at at the time of the second and third lockdown and so on we were able to to uh, to uh, work through, through, through together so with the online zoom and so on so yes he has a, he had a seriously an impact on my thesis i mean i was also a little bit uh, uh, stopped in my simulation in the sensorless approach because uh, uh, there were a lot of pe people at the same time in our department, so we had to manage the the time spent in our laboratory. So with the with the with, with respect to the priority that each, each person had at the time, so also uh, all my thesis has an impact in uh, with the COVID pandemic. I mean, but uh, I think that uh, I'm very happy for the for for the work. I mean. And uh, uh, for the person I, uh, with I work in you know, with Mathieu, uh, Guillermo, Nadege, and so on. And um, how long do you estimate the delay caused by the COVID to the production of PIC? Uh, okay, well, uh, the production of the PIC uh, has almost six months, and even more of the de de delay. We were uh, we were dealing with the with the company for the encapsulation after uh, having uh, the wa the wafer. I mean, we we had the wa the wafer, but was difficult to deal with the with the company in order to make the encapsulation between the single mode fi fiber and the peak and the electrode also. So it was uh, was not so easy, and uh, there was a, there was a company, and then we managed with another one. So it took a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. It took a lot of time. Thank you very much. Uh, You're welcome. Well, I think I will stop here for the question. So, uh, as usual, your the, the spectators are invited to, to ask that question or to make some comments if they want. Uh, if somebody comments or want to, to say something? No? No. <laughs> okay, so we have no comments. So, uh, in principle, we should gather the jury now. Uh, close session. So, uh, or do, or do we, 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 we stay, we stay here? here? Okay, so we stay here with uh, the official jury. Uh,